experience, what you, what you had in your near-death experience, you came back with one key realization, and that is that we never really left heaven, ever. Basically, we shifted our focus to what I think you call the empty space that we sometimes call physicality. I've never heard it put that way. It resonated so much with me. Can you elaborate on that for our audience? But what's happened is the science is there. We've been told all our lives that we're all one. And yet you look at space and time and distance between yourself. But now that we've moved from, from Newtonian mechanics, from the physical, to the physics, to the chemical, and now to the quantum level of perception, all of a sudden those so-called mythologies are scientific proven facts. So what I said yesterday was, hey, look, everybody, if you took all the empty space out of every atom, you, everybody knows the physical world is made of atoms, molecules, and cells. Every physical body. If you take all the empty space out of all the atoms, 94.6%, all the empty space out of every molecule, that's about 93%, and all the empty space out of every atom, that's about 94 or 5%. What you're left with, if you took every human being in the United States, I'd say it's roughly 320 million. There's a few here without a green card. But if you have 320 million people, you took all the empty space out of every atom, every molecule, and every cell, what you end up with is that the entire population of the United States will fit in a matchbox. That is absolute proven science. It is unequivocal, proven, replicated scientific study. When you take that and you add that they've discovered a new matter called dark matter, dark matter right. and that the entire universe is suspended in this dark matter, it's amazing how science finally named, found a name for God, dark matter. <laughs> it shows that we may see the light sooner or later. But when you realize that this matter permeates everything, and science now has proven in the quantum string theory that this matter connects everything. Mm -hmm. So we're all connected. So how can you be separate from anything when in the empty space of every atom, molecule, and cell is this matter? They spent $17 billion to create a collider. And what this collider is hunting is what's called the Higgs boson particle, the trigger of the Big Bang. Mm -hmm. And it's electron, bombard electron bombardment. When you start to look at what they're proving in this, the whole sense of physicality becomes utter nonsense. And just two weeks ago, they came out with a study in England because reality is focused light, which is a spectrum of red, orange, yellow, blue, green, indigo, and violet. It's a series of vibrations that through the atmosphere becomes light. Mm -hmm. That we are living in a hologram that we are a matrix, like, welcome to the matrix, Neo. Yeah. And we're living in this hologram. When you start seeing scientific documentation, peer-reviewed studies of this stuff, all that old-time spiritual, all the old-time mythologies uh, become to be real. So I realized that going through three of these experiences, and the, the most dramatic was the first one being struck by light, that I had to find a language. You know, hillbilly's hard enough to understand, but I had to find a language where people could, to look for words, and I started reading dictionaries and thesauruses and trying to find a language that I could give people a concept, like Kat was saying, ultimate joy and ecstasy and celebration and spiritual oneness happens in a near-death experience. Mm -hmm. So I tried to find language. And when you start to realize that the science now reinforces the fact that you have never left where you originated from, you just decided to focus on your hand. And you decided to focus on your hand because you could possess something with it, and at the same time you could burn it on a stove. So you could create pain, or you can control and possess something. And that's a part of the physical reality that doesn't exist in the spiritual framework. 